What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I am back again today bringing you guys another episode of the Upgraded Budget series here on my channel. And if you guys are new to the series, this is the series that is kind of the follow-up to a previous series that I did where we went into depth about cards that are low priced but still very good especially for their price now in this series the reason that I called an upgraded budget series is because obviously new cards have come out since then and a lot of those cards are actually included in this video but also uh, the the cards that were somewhat more expensive back then have also dropped in price in a lot of cases so where we were comparing some cards that were a little bit overpriced before now we're just going to go in and actually take a look at these individual cards and I'm going to show you why there are cheaper cards that you can get you don't have to spend a hundred thousand coins on every single position in order to have a good team here in Madden 25 ultimate team and you know of course the game is wrapping up here so you know I don't want to to go out and tell you that you should you know replace your entire team with these type of guys but uh, you know and especially considering that some of the high price cards are still going to continue to drop in price over the next month here before Madden 15 comes out but for right now these defensive ends I think are very very good many of them are underutilized as well more people should be using them on their budget squads and that's really kind of what we're going to look at today so of course there are w when we take a look at this we need to also we need to kind of consider the price so I'm going to give you guys kind of a, a variance in price here it's gonna go somewhere between about 5,000 to 25,000 coins in these four cards that we're gonna take a look at today there's gonna to be two left defensive ends and two right defensive ends so you can of course mix and match them if you want to if you don't care about chemi chemistry and things like that um, you know that's always an option as well so with that being said, let's get into these cards, and I want to show you guys kind of the the overlying attributes that we're going to be looking at. So the nine attributes that I like to take a look at for defensive ends are as follows. Speed, strength, awareness, play recognition, tackling, hit power, finesse moves, power moves, and block shedding. And then, of course, on the far right, you are going to see the price of each card in terms of coins. So... With that being said, let's take a look at this first card, which is left defensive end Mario Williams, the team MVP playoff card. And this might be the best defensive end under 25,000 coins in this entire game. I personally would say that it probably is. Um, it, it has really just about everything that you would want in a defensive end. So the three best attributes I would say for defensive end, and of course it's going to vary depending on your specific defense, but I think most people, these are the most important things. And these are strength, and then you need a good, either a finesse move or a power move. And, and some people would say that the power move is better. I think most people would agree at this point that finesse move is the more overpowered attribute. Uh, it gets better pass rush and things like that. And then the last thing is that you do need a high block shed. So all of the cards that we're going to take a look at today are, are going to be at least a yellow in at least two out of three of those attributes anyway and for the most part they're going to have a lot of greens and, and basically what that means is that green is for that position so for defensive end green means that that's a really good attribute yellow means it's, it's okay and then red means that it's bad so that that just kind of uh, is what we've done throughout the series just to kind of give you an idea obviously if we were looking at another position green uh, you know like wide receiver for example 86 speed would not be green it would be red but for defensive end obviously they're bigger players they're not going to be quite as fast uh, so speed at 86 for mario williams is a green attribute and he is one of the faster defensive ends in the game strength he only has an 89 now that is kind of right on the verge of being a green attribute so it's not bad um, but it's not great either we, we would love to see a higher strength attribute because strength is going to help him not get pancaked and it's just going to help him as a general player strength i think for most positions it might be the most underrated attribute in the game there, there's a ton of different things that it goes into uh, especially for defensive players we need that high strength Moving on then, we've got awareness and play recognition, which kind of go hand in hand for the most part. And of course, Mario Williams is green in both of those attributes. 
85 tackle. Tackle is probably the one that I would consider to be the least important, but a lot of people ask me to include that, so I, I just decided to include it. Um, to me, tackling, for the most part, most players are going to be able to make tackles. Even if they've got like a 65 tackle rating in this game, it seems like they can make tackles for the most part. Now, of course, when you're getting run over by Jerome Bettis and he hits you with the hit stick, sometimes it doesn't even matter. I've, I've had my whatever 100 hit power brian dawkins card just get murdered by running backs with that truck stick so you know to me i don't really know why tackling uh is so important to some people to me it's really just not but you know of course like i said i just included it for everybody who's interested in that attribute hit power mario williams is an 85 hit power which means that he is going to force fumbles when he gets sacks a lot of times and also he can also make fumbles when uh, he hits running backs or if you drop him into coverage which i think he's underrated as a coverage defensive end i know that's a weird thing to say he actually does make decent plays in coverage because of that great awareness and play recognition uh, and then he then of course he's got 95 finesse move so, 95 finesse move. There are not very many cards in this game that have higher than that. He is an absolute beast of a pass rusher when you combine the speed, the uh, finesse move, and then he's also got that 89 block shed. The one attribute where he is red is power move, and to me that really doesn't matter because he's got such a high finesse move, and he's going to go to finesse move as a default. So you're rarely going to see him attempting the power move unless you're manually, manually controlling him. In which case, if you're doing that and trying to use your power move with Mario Williams, uh, good luck with that. <laughs> it's not really going to work out well for you. But if the computer's controlling him like most people do with their defensive ends, Mario Williams is going to get after the quarterback very, very well. For 18,000 coins, like I said, he is a great, great value and definitely deserves to be in this series. Moving on now to the cheaper left defensive end card. This one is actually only going for 5,000 coins, and it's a free agency edition of Arthur Jones. Uh, Arthur Jones is a player who uh, is kind of more known as being almost like a run-stopping defensive end, so you're going to see him not have as high of speed here at only an 80. Uh, his awareness and his play recognition aren't as high. He's, you know, he does fall for the play actions a little bit more often, but that's okay because really what we wanted to do is be that run stop and defensive end, and that's really what he does great at. He has 95 block shed and 94 power move. Those attributes are beastly. Uh, I mean, really, for a 93 overall player, you're not going to find better than that. He is very, very good at those things, uh, just like the Mario Williams card, but in, in an opposite way. He's actually much better with that power move than he is the finesse move, so you're going to see him defaulting to that uh, when you're not user controlling him. So he does make good plays against the run. Like I said, he's not as great against the pass, but still decent enough. I, I've seen him get sacks. So I'm not saying that he's going to be terrible against the pass by any means. But when you're spending only 5,000 coins on a card, you kind of need to make some sacrifices somewhere. There's typically not going to be a card that's perfect for 5,000 coins. So with that being said, 5,000 coins for Arthur Jones I think is an excellent value. And he is going to do a great job against those opponents that you play, like me, who love to run the football. He's going to do a very good job of sealing that edge. Um, breaking uh, blocks and just making great plays against the run with that power move, that high tackling. And he also has 90 strength, which, like I said, is, is only a yellow attribute, but um, it's still higher than most left defensive ends. So it, it's a decent attribute, very close to being a green attribute in that category. Next card, and this is the first right defensive end that we're going to take a look at, and that is Team MVP Playoff Robert Quinn. This card is a lot like the Mario Williams card, but obviously it plays on the opposite side of the defensive line. It has a lot of the same type of attributes with the high speed, the high uh, hit power, the high power move, though, in this case, as opposed to finesse move. However, unlike most of the cards that you're going to see that are very, very good in one attribute, that have that green attribute in one of the pass rushing things, Typically, those are going to be accompanied by the other attribute being really, really low, like we've seen with the first two in the 60s. This card doesn't have that. This card's finesse move is still an 80, and, and while 80 isn't great, it's still decent. It really is. It's a yellow attribute for the position, so um, that is one of the things that I really like about this Robert Quinn card. It is a great overall defensive end. The only thing that it's low in is tackling, and like I said, that's the attribute that I care the least about. I really don't even care about it at all. 
Um, my defensive ends, I don't think I've ever had a situation where I'm like, I can't believe he's not making tackles. It just doesn't happen. When they get the guy in the backfield, they tend to make the tackle. They have decent enough strength, and uh, they just make the tackles. So I, I don't typically worry about that, like I said. But, you know, like I, like I was going into about this card, it has the high 94 power move, so it's going to do a great job getting after the passer, especially when you combine it with the 87 speed. So it is the fastest defensive end that we're going to be looking at today, and one of the fastest defensive ends in the game, other than, of course, when you take linebackers and things like that and put them at the end. But uh, for a pure defensive end and one that you can get the chemistry boosts from, Robert Quinn is awesome. He's only 25,000 coins, and that does make him the, the most expensive card that we're going to look at today. However, I think he's worth it. If you've got 25,000 coins, I mean, obviously a 98 overall card, that's pretty enticing, especially if you're rocking a budget squad. But uh, he, it's, it's just one of those cards where I think that a lot of people look at things like his 88 block shed and his 84 strength, and they think, yeah, it's not really going to be that great. But the fact that he is still a yellow in those attributes, even though it's lower than some of the other cards, that's still decent enough. And when you combine it with that 87 speed and the 94 power move, whew, you have a pretty darn good defensive end. So I really like this card, highly recommend it, and I've used it a few times in my games as well. Next card, and this is the final card of the episode today, and that is Chris Clemens, the new member of the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is the free agency edition card, and he is, you see a lot of red on the screen here, and it's in areas that I typically don't like to see, uh, the strength being only an 82. That's a major concern to me, because strength is, like I said, I think it's the most underrated attribute in this game. It, it goes into a lot of different aspects of the game. But the thing is, though, Chris Clemens makes up for it in some of these other areas, particularly his finesse move. 97 finesse move. That is unbelievably high for a player that most people haven't even heard of. <laughs> Chris Clemens, 97 finesse move. He still also has 83 speed, which is on the low end of being green, but it's still a green attribute nevertheless. And then he also has 89 awareness and 86 play recognition, which is actually the highest combination of any of the cards that we've looked at today. Now, awareness and play recognition isn't typically something that people think about defensive ends needing, and I would say that it's not highly important. However, if you play people that do a lot of play action passes, or if you play people that do a lot of read option, it's great to have a player like this who will read those plays and make great plays against the run, because uh, there's people like me who are going to abuse you if you have defensive ends that have low awareness and play rec, and you don't tell them what to do before the play. I'm just going to run it right at them, and they're not going to make the right play, and I'm going to get big gains. So this is the kind of card that can really counteract a player like me who likes to run a lot of read option. I really like this Chris Clemens card. It does only have the 85 block shed, which is a yellow attribute, and it's actually kind of, it's not on the super low end of being yellow, but it's definitely not on the high end either. So, um, you know, that's a little bit of a concern, like I said, that, that doesn't help it against the run, but it's okay against the run in terms of the getting off of the blocks. But like I said, when you consider that it has the high awareness to play rack and then that finesse move as well, it gets after the quarterback with that finesse move and uh, it helps read the read options and things like that with the awareness and play rack. So again, it does unfortunately have red attributes in the tackling and the power moves, but like I said in the previous slide, it's pretty rare that you're going to have a card like Robert Quinn who's good at both of the pass rush moves. You're typically only going to be good at one of them, and when he's 97 at one of them, we will take the 73 because you're not going to see him going for that very often. He's going to go for that 97 finesse move even when you're not user controlled again. So that is going to do it for today's episode, the upgraded defensive end position. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, make sure you press that like button below. And also, be sure to leave a comment as well because I want to hear what you guys have to say if you've used any of these cards or if you have any other cards that come to mind as being good budget defensive ends. It's always good to hear from you guys. Please let me know also what position that you want to see next. We've only got a few left, but we've got things like quarterbacks and running backs, tight ends and things like that that we can get into. So I'm, I'm uh, still grinding out this Madden 25 before Madden 15 does finally make its debut in a few weeks here. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you press that subscribe button because we've got plenty of content coming out still with Madden 25. And then, of course, I'm going to take uh, hit the ground running with Madden 15 as soon as it comes out. 
So thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. And I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.